The windswept journey to Valarm can be an act of penance in itself. Valarm doesn't offer excitement or adventure, yet many come here for months at a time. Some never leave at all. They say that Valarm saves them. This is one of the holiest sites of the Russian Orthodox Church, home to a thriving monastery, the lay community that works with it, and groups of volunteers that come and go throughout the year. For the faithful, this is a journey for the soul, a pilgrimage. This is the place that has been consecrated to God for almost a thousand of years. People came here 20 some years ago to re-establish the monastic life on this island. So they did that believing that uh, Christ is the only source of true joy and uh, happiness in life. That understanding penetrated into everything that uh, surrounds us uh, in the monastery. And uh, people, I suppose, feel that, feel the love of Christ or working through people. So girls, we'll divide into groups now. So we need about, um, Sergey, how many people do you need? Seven. Seven people. Who will you choose? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven people, good. The rest will split into two. One half will go to the farm, the other to the upper garden. Who's already been to the upper garden? You. Okay, then. Can I go to the upper garden? I'm allergic to animals. Can I go to the farm? And me. We'll go to the farm. Cows, awesome. I'd come to Valarm with a group of volunteers, men and women of all ages, who are here to give something back to God. And in this case, it means hard work. This is the middle of the busy tourist season, and there's plenty to do down on the farm. All right. Come in, come in. Into the chicken coop. It's like into the lion's den. Tag. Can I? Careful, careful. How to hold her? She doesn't know you. Careful. Like this? It's okay? Put her on your hand. She'll sit on your hand. It's a bit stressful for them. Touch her on the neck. Like this. Okay, so we... Apparently they like having their wattles stroked. But uh, this one's gone... Far away from me. We'll try this side. Ooh. So. Here we go, madam. What's that? Like this? They're sanctified on Valam, and they're very kind. See how kind they are? <laughs> good girl, good girl. Valam special eggs. Let's see what the fuss is all about. One, two, three. Whether it's the saintly atmosphere or something in their feed, they're certainly fantastic layers. Two gigantic chickens here, right? Go on then. Up. Excuse me. Thank you very much. One, two. Yes, I know, it's not very nice. And that's it. One, two, three, four, four. One, two. One set done. Only another 775 to go. The volunteers come from a huge variety of different backgrounds. Svetlana is a model from Moscow, but she's not afraid of getting her hands dirty. It's probably not normal that a girl like me came here instead of going to Turkey or enjoying summer on a beach somewhere. But here I am, living with monks and weeding someone else's garden. But there are other people that look at themselves and at life in a completely different way, and they're not held back, really. We're all here. Valam, for me, is a place of strong spiritual power. I've wanted to come here for a long time. Now there is a possibility I can become a volunteer. 
Here, we work for the glory of God and help restore this place. There are common threads that bind many of the people here together, and the group often becomes like a surrogate family. Mostly, these are Orthodox people who came here to find uh, brotherhood. But of course, there is some percentage that come uh, here uh, looking for their way in life, and uh, then I take them for a walk in the woods and uh, try to do whatever I can to help them find the answer. Many people simply come for the island's outstanding natural beauty. Edged by rugged shorelines and covered with lush greenery, this is truly a tranquil getaway. But there are some visitors to Valam who have no families to return to and whose trip to the island is a welcome break from a difficult life. Lika Zelezniak runs a camp for children from local orphanages who also have learning difficulties. For many, it's the first time they've spent nights away from the city. The first time we came here with disabled children. For many years before, we used to take the kids on trips. We did that because we understood that nature does children a world of good. That year, we decided to try working with children with the help of Volam's nature. And this place turned out to be totally unique. It's not just the nature here that works. You should bear in mind that these children are from a correctional orphanage. They are believed to be unable to go to an ordinary school because of some mental disability. In fact, this isn't true. They are not mentally retarded whatsoever. These are the first kids that just sit on the shore of Ladoga and watch the storms, the splashing water. And they say, thank you for choosing such a beautiful place. It was simply amazing. They feel it. They can feel the beauty. Apparently, they don't have good feelings in their lives. Hardly any. 15-year-old Denise is just one of the youngsters reaping the benefit. This is his second time on the island, and he says it's changed his life. But it's a rocky road that's brought him here. I can't say that I had a good childhood. My dad was an alcoholic, my mom was too. Mom ended up in prison. That's how I ended up in an orphanage. Everything changes as time goes by. At the moment, I have no grudge against anyone. My life has become so much better now. I've forgotten my past. It's no good remembering it. And he's a handy man to have around when you catch something, too. Oh. Pull it down to the shore. There's a beauty. Woohoo! Ah. Nice weather for ducks. I'm king of fishing! Yes! In English weather! What the hell am I doing here? <laughs> Seriously? Uh... Ксения, Светлана, Тамара, Валентина, Ольга, Виктор, Ксения, Ксения. I was staying in the volunteers' dormitory. Normally, men and women are kept segregated, but the odd get-together is allowed, especially for a meet-and-greet session. Everyone says where they're from, why they've come to Valam, and their name. Then, all you've got to do is remember them. Ксения, Е... Огнешка, Елена. Сергей! Вот да! Окей, давайте have a go. Ксения, Светлана, Тамара, Валентина, Ольга, Виктор, Ксения, Ксения, Вера, Даша, Александр, Владимир, Сергей, Мария, Алла, Галина, Полина, 
Вероника, Светлана, Светлана, Ксения, Светлана, Николай, Геннадий, Ксения, Агнешка, Елена, Сергей, Джейн. And you said he wouldn't be able to do it. Sometimes. Sometimes it works. Sometimes. Work at the monastery takes us all around the island, along roads that people have travelled here for more than 150 years. Although most of the brothers live in the centre of the monastery, a small selection choose to isolate themselves from the rest of the community, retiring to hermitages where only men are allowed to enter the grounds. The Russians call these places skeets, and they're among the holiest centres of Valam. Each one is way off the beaten track, and for some of the volunteers, the journey to God has been anything but straightforward too. I used to be an atheist and believed in nothing but science, logic and facts. I was looking for truth everywhere. I followed all the popular fashions that people write books and make films about. Only after 20 years of searching did I become an Orthodox Christian. After praying at the coffin of a famous Russian saint, I discovered that many things had changed. First of all, the pain in my leg that I'd suffered for ages had disappeared. And last but not least, I discovered the ability to read in Old Church Slavonic, even though I'd never learned how to do that. Those who've been here more than once say you have to put the time into Valam to understand it fully. That living and working here is the only way to really tap into its energy. The job is tough and repetitive, but none of the volunteers complain. Everyone is confident of a spiritual reward and happy that they're working to re-establish a faith that was so persecuted during the Soviet Union. Our faith is the only branch that has managed to keep the apostolic tradition alive. That's not changed since the time of the apostles. Maybe that's why it has preserved the bread of life that Jesus Christ spoke of, the living word. That's why Russia is experiencing a spiritual rise now. <laughs> 